Welcome to Just Asia, AHRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Thai activist continues hunger strike in prison. Sedition charges filed against Amnesty International India. Over 1,000 bodies found in Balochistan. No progress in activist Munir's assassination case. Urgent appeals from the Philippines and Indonesia. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I am Julia Roblondo. This week, Just Asia begins with Thailand, where 25-year-old Jatupat Bonyapatraksa is continuing his hunger strike at Fukiao District Prison, Chayafum Province. A student activist from the New Democracy Movement, Jatupat was arrested on August 6 for distributing anti-constitution flyers. He was arrested together with Wasin Pramani, another student activist who was later freed on bail. Jatupat, however, refused to submit a bail request. He began his hunger strike to affirm his innocence and protest against Thailand's broken justice system. Jatupat has developed a fever currently and has been given some paracetamol. For refusing to cooperate with police to put their thumbprints on the police documents, Jatupat and Wasin are also accused of violating Section 61 of the Constitutional Referendum Act and Announcement No. 25-2549 of the Council of Democratic Reform. Anyone convicted under the controversial Section 61 faces up to 10 years imprisonment, a fine of up to 200,000 baht, and loss of electoral rights for five years. On Monday, August 15, around 40 lecturers from Narasan University and activists from Dao Din, a youth activist group based in Konkan University, visited Jatupat in detention. Only 10 of them were allowed to meet Jatupat, however, for a period of 15 minutes. Authorities also prohibited the activists from staging any activity in front of the prison. Pro-democracy group The Resistant Citizen have invited ordinary Thai people to write postcards calling for the government to drop charges against Jatupat. <laughs> อันนี้พี่มามาดูม็อบเนี่ยเหรอมาดูกิจกรรมเนี่ยคือความเรียบร้อยอ๋อโฆษกสักใบมั้ยมั้ยนะคะไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไ
In Pakistan, meanwhile, official reports state that nearly a thousand bullet-ridden corpses have been recovered from various parts of Balochistan in the past six years. Many of these corpses have been unrecognizable, with the faces burnt by the use of acid, a tactic used by the intelligent agencies. The official data also discloses that over 112 persons are still missing in the province. More than 9,000 suspected militants and criminals have been arrested by police, levies, frontier corps, and intelligence agencies in Balochistan. This does not include disappearances. Balochistan province, rich in natural resources, has been lagging in major economic and social development indicators. The Baloch discontent with state policies is a direct consequence of ill-crafted security, centric policies of the state, whereby the masses are left to fend for themselves. In particular, the common perception amongst the people is that the state is only interested in saving the China-Pakistan economic corridor, through which the Baloch fear they will become a minority in their own province. The state's strategy of creating and supporting the Islamist extremist groups to manage domestic political challenges has enormously aggravated the problem in Balochistan. Moving to Indonesia. The second year of President Joko Widodo's administration has done little to solve the murder of the prominent activist Mr. Munir Said Talib. Munir was poisoned aboard a Garuda Indonesia flight to Amsterdam on 7th of September 2004. Since then, the case remains unresolved, with the only one perpetrator convicted with 20 years imprisonment. Mr. Polycarpus Budihari Priyanto, a pilot as well as an intelligence agency official, was found guilty of putting arsenic in Munir's orange juice. However, in 2015, Polycarpus was released on parole without clear reasons. Furthermore, President Widodo is close to retired Army General Hendro Priyono, former head of Indonesia's National Intelligence Agency, who was alleged mastermind behind Munir's killing. The future of this case is worsening since the police have ended any further investigations into the case, while the government is reluctant to publicly open the fact-finding report. To learn more, just Asia speaks to Munir's wife, Mrs. Suci Wati. Sebelas tahun, memang hal yang sangat panjang ketika kasus ini sebetulnya sangat jelas siapa pelaku di balik pembunuhan almarhum suami saya Munir. Jadi bahkan hari ini kita bisa melihat tidak ada satupun yang dipenjarakan atas pembunuhan ini. Dan ini tentunya pekerjaan yang kalau memang serius pemerintah ini setelah pengungkapannya ya dan dan tidak kemudian juga ya akhirnya kita bisa lihat buntu tapi saya tetap berharap bahwa dengan dipilihnya Jokowi yang e, salah satunya yang membuat dia terpilih adalah ketika dia menjual ya kita kita bilang menjual karena dia terpilih dan semuanya terpesona karena e, dia berjanji akan menegakkan HAM dan salah satunya tentunya hari ini kita tagi uh, untuk menyelesaikan kasus ini. Kalau kemarin 10 tahun SBY tidak berhasil menyelesaikannya dan hari ini uh, harusnya Jokowi bisa menyelesaikan karena uh, dia bisa uh, tinggal meminta hasil tim pencari fakta karena sudah ada rekomendasinya dan saya pikir uh, itu hal yang tinggal muda untuk kemudian menyelesaikan saya pikir itu Finally, the Urgent Appeals Weekly features two cases from Philippines and Indonesia A human rights defender in Bataan, Philippines was killed by unidentified men in front of her relatives Last year, due to the victim's resistance to an open coal storage, she was threatened and intimidated by the storage company. In Indonesia, criminal defamation charges were leveled against Mr. Haris Azar for sharing Mr. Freddy Budiman's story regarding the alleged involvement of high-ranking police and military personnel in the illegal drug business. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, 
please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia forward slash just Asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.